Gravity Bell. <laughs> It's a fun song. Ma, I love this song. I just heard this song. Okay, well, this is a good song to start off on a conversation about Electron. Because uh, he mentions gravity <laughs> and mass. And, and frankly, that's the first thing that comes to mind when most technologists uh, who know think about Electron. This is the reason Electron apps are starting to get black eyes a lot by people. So it's just bloated, okay? And so let's talk about what Electron is, why people hate it, uh, why people love it, um, and whether you should use it or not. And we'll uh, try to be as impartial as possible, but I'll tell you right out, right off the bat, that I am not very pro Electron. I feel like more people should try to do more uh, and move. It's a great prototyping tool, but so many people create, so many companies and people create applications with Electron uh, that should go the extra mile and do more. So. Uh, let's talk about what it is, and, and you know it. You, I almost guarantee you that you've used Electron before. Uh, if you've used, let me think if I can think of them all. If you've used Spotify, if you've used uh, Discord, if you've used Molvad VPN, uh, uh, if, if you've used, uh, I suppose, Pretzel. I think Pretzel is, I'm, I'm not sure. I just talked about it in another video. Um, all of these applications are using this technology, and I use Electron a lot of times to show that the most important uh, technology to learn today is web tech. Everything is web now. Uh, Etcher, yep, yeah, Etcher's another one, thanks. Um, so applications from big, oh, VS Code, there's the other big one. That's a really big one. Um, all of these major applications use this technology. Why? Because it's web tech. At the end of the day, Electron is just web pages. It's in fact, it's a web server. If you know what that is, that's what you go. That's what serves up your web pages when your web browser you go visit something. It's a web server, portable web server, uh, combined with a portable web browser, Chromium, the same web server. I mean, browser that's put into uh, Edge now. It's in everything except Firefox. So Firefox is the only major browser that's not now Chromium. Chromium has become the core. Of everything else. It's also the reason that I believe Chrome is the most important web browser uh, for web development because the dev tools in Chrome are far superior to everything else. Even though for my daily browsing I use um, Brave and of course on the stream I use Firefox because it's the only thing that will um, work with OBS on Linux currently as far as I know. Okay so Electron is JavaScript. It's a Java server. It's a server and it's a browser built in. And so what you get from that is you get these, these applications that um, look very webified. And that's awesome. In fact, a lot of them usually will use um, a design model called material design, which we may have another video on someday, that comes from Google. That's their attempt to unify. If you haven't noticed, everything lately has got sort of the same colors and animation, and they all have the rounded corners on the edges. Um, and this, you know, even Electron is, is doing it right here. So it's a search bar, that whole thing. So uh, material design is a separate thing we'll talk about. But because of material design, uh, which came, it, we are now able to sort of like forget about what it is that's creating our applications and focus more on uh, this, you know, implementation universally of material design. And why does that matter? Because now all of our apps in Electron sort of look the same. They could look random, they look way different. Um, let me try again. All right, so. So Electron, Electron is a server and a web browser combined, uh, and therefore that's why people hate it uh, and love it. it they, the people who love it are the developers because all they have to do is web stuff that they normally would have already done, and then they run it. It's extremely easy, and then you can convert your application into an app. And the app, wait, did I say that? An application into an app. They can convert their basically their website into an app. And they can use React or Vue or whatever, and they get the full functionality of a full app. And that, I mean, a true app, the kind of app you could put in an app store, not um, a progressive web app, which requires a web browser. Question, basically, Vim should be rewritten in Electron. <laughs> Hell no. Hell to the no. <laughs> um, so, and the people that hate it, they hate it because of how fat it is. 
you can imagine having one uh, just one version of Chrome open. I have two browsers open. If you look at my, you know, I only have, uh, I, don't, I don't, I mean, I've got, let me look at my RAM here. Uh, I was like blogging. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's look at, let's just see how much, how much RAM I have right now. So 83% memory utilization. I have, uh, I have, you know, eight gig of memory and I'm using 73% of it for two browsers and OBS and hex chat, which is tiny. Um, that's, you know, that's a lot. In fact, if, if I trace the utilization of, of that, which I don't have in this version of top, uh, you would see that almost everything is going to the browsers. And so why would you make an application, you know, a tiny little thing like, I don't know, a VPN connection or etcher uh, that uses all of Electron, right? Um, that can get really annoying because now you're giving up all your memory for these tiny little applications and that's bloat and you know discerning um, systems designers and developers really hate that not to mention the end users it's like why why do I not have any memory left for my you know little applications it's but I mean I've named some pretty common ones there let's name them again so so the big one VS code right um, VS code discord Spotify, there's three apps that most people are going to be running all the time. Then if you add your your web browser that you know you're gonna regularly use, or in my case I have two web browsers, right? I have the I have Brave for my personal browsing and another browser for um, for that works with OBS. So that's five instances of Chromium running on a computer. And that will tank systems with even sixteen or you know around sixteen gigabytes of RAM. And that's why people hate it because the the it's so easy to make applications that are really beautiful using Electron that are that are relatively snappy if you use Canvas, uh, which is a technology for uh, that uses the GPU. Um, so you see people you see people using them a lot, and what the the end result of that is is that you end up um, with everything becoming Electron. And so if you if you apply the mantra, what if everybody did it, which I believe you should apply in every aspect of your life, um, you have a problem. Because if VI, as Zeros was joking, is now Electron, you know, that's seven versions of Chromium. Um, there was a time, however, before when it was actually worse than this. And I'm not talking about Electron, it was in the Java days. There was a time when, I, when a technology called Eclipse, so once upon a time, story time with Mr. Rob. Once upon a time, there was a technology that's now largely dead called Eclipse. Um, and what it did, and they've not got a foundation, that's how you know they're about to die. <laughs> because when they get so big, they have their own, you know, governance and everything. So Eclipse was, uh, okay, so they're still centered on their ID, thank God. Um, so why does Eclipse matter? So the Eclipse Foundation... Uh, here's the story that I'll I'll start again so that I can clip it proper or I can trim it. Okay, so here's Eclipse.org. What are they? What do they do? Uh, it's now full foundation. Uh, their IDE. Oh, here's a big link here too. Download now. Download now. Um, they looks like they're still going strong. Um, the Eclipse IDE, however, is a bloated monster uh, that no one should use, and, and I'm gonna get yells at for saying that, but it's true. Um, yeah, <laughs> polishing the, yeah. Um, so it says it's the leading open platform for professional developers. When someone has to write that in their tagline, you know, there's a problem. <laughs> it's like, it's like the Russian newspaper that's called Pravda, the truth, or, you know, Fox News, fair and balanced. I don't think I've ever encountered a more unbalanced uh, news source. So when someone puts innovation center or something like that in a thing you almost always are like going to be skeptical <laughs> because it should be obvious just from the reputation so um an id what's an id is id is a way to to write code an individual development environment and and they are now largely shunned to think and then we'll do a thing on how the bloated ides of the past have largely died and we're now on to the thin light and fast IDEs of which VS Code is probably the premier example of that although Sublime started it um, there's a there's a, a comment I, I remember all the YouTube tutorials on how to make Minecraft mods telling you to download and set up clips well you have to right um, and let's talk about that that's a great point um, Eclipse 
is the primary, I, I imagine it still is, um, although IntelliJ has got to be right up there. Um, Eclipse is still the primary tool for doing Java development in most of the world. And since Java is the number two most employed uh, language in the world um, and has massive, you know, deployment, it's like I call it modern COBOL, um, it's everywhere. So, and it was IBM when I was there, I, we had to use Eclipse. I hated it. I found all kinds of ways to work around it so that I could edit files with VI or whatever, and then just save them in the file structure. And then I would bypass Eclipse entirely until I had to use it for something uh, such as like committing the code or something. Uh, but why does this have anything to do with Electron? Um, I mean, if you saw the size of let's download and see how big it is, just the, just the, the compressed file. Should we do that? Uh, allow cookies. Where's my downloads? Downloads. Um, I don't think you can see that. Is it still downloading? Oh my god, it's like still down. No, 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 it's not. Download the Eclipse installer. Oh yeah, yeah. This isn't fair because all you're gonna actually get the. You know, when I download it, all I get is this nice light little installer, and then you have to sit there and wait forever for the big monster to come down. Um, I mean, this is a perfect example of bloated development. Um, and you see it happen in big organizations, particularly uh, another really big bloated one is um, Visual Studio. And um, maybe check the repository. Uh, I don't know. I'm like, should we do that? Let's see. More uh, blogs report a bug. Download. Get started. How to contact us. ID and tools. We found it kind of on accident and I can't find it again. How to contribute. Yeah, I will definitely do that someday. Um, let's see, packages. Those of you prefer not to use the installer. Ooh, package download. Let's do that. There you go. So let's download the one for Linux, 64 bit. Oh, it's 353 megabytes, which, I mean, you know, these days is not much. People have space. Oh, this is the Eclipse JEE. And this is, this is another really annoying thing about Eclipse. I'm, I'm just going to rant a little bit. They have like all these different versions that are that are like different takes on the the core thing. Uh, by the way, this is a core tool at IBM. Everybody has to use it. It really sucks. Um, and let's get back to what. Okay, so what is Eclipse, and why do we care, and how does it relate to Electron, and what can we learn from Eclipse? So to do that, I have to do some story time, and I love telling stories. <laughs> it's like my favorite way to teach, uh, or to whatever share. And so here's the story. Okay, so once upon a time, I worked at IBM and uh, I was told, okay, you need to use same time. And if you don't know what same time is, I don't even want to look for it. I'm not even going to try. I, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> it's just like PTSD. IBM same time. So we're, we're, we'll just go here. IBM same time. So same time is this, is this uh, client server application. It's basically chat. Oh man, we lost. I started story time and lost Andrew. Oh well. Um, so, what is same time? Same time is Eclipse uh, bundled into uh, an application. So, to, to, to understand this, I have to tell you the whole story. The Electron. Yeah, it probably was. Um, so, let me let me say let me start the story again. So Eclipse started out as a simple IDE that was built on Java and everybody could you do their Java development on it and they were all happy and, and uh, it was actually better than everything else out there. It was definitely better than Visual Studio and, and it was uh, snappier and it was made in the cool technology of the day. It was made in Java. It, it was very modular, which because Java is very modular, so you could extend it pretty easily. And therein is the problem. Um, because it was so easy to modify and it was more of an all things to all people, it was like a, this, you know, this abstract framework that happened to be an IDE but could be made to do anything you wanted to really very modularly. Um, that ended up being taken by people and say, you know what? We could, instead of just making this an editor, if we added this extra module here, we could actually talk to a chat server. And then we could have our own brand, basically, of Eclipse, which is what I'm showing you right now. Every single brand, there's like tons more probably. So, so there was, so it was so modular and so abstract that it could get, that it could get modified and customized for anything. And everybody really loved that because they were making their own versions of it. 
Uh, and then, of course, you know, some smart person came along and said, well, what if we just, what if we, instead of making our own IDE, what if we kind of ripped the IDE part out and replaced it with a chat client so that it could talk to you at the same time? We could still use all the same framework and everything. And so what we ended up with is a full version of Eclipse, which includes a full version of Java. And if you're not familiar with how bloated Java is, you just need to look at the, the, the JVM or the JRE even. Um, and... And not only did they, so, and, and then of course it, it combined the worst of Java. So Java was this thing that was going to be this engine that you would be on all computers and then you would write, compile this code and it would run on all computers. It would be write once, run everywhere. And that never, ever happened. And it, it actually became the worst possible thing because, because that never took root. And Python has the same problem now. It's kind of fun to watch. Um, it never took root. What that meant was that everyone had a different version of Java for their application, which destroyed the dream and the hope that everyone would have Java on their devices and it would be the same version. You could just distribute this lightweight little um, jar, which you probably know about from Minecraft world. So the jar would, you know, come on this system that came pre-installed with Java and was and it was not even evergreen, which means it didn't automatically upgrade. So people would not upgrade their JREs. And then people would write applications based on different versions of the JREs, the different versions of the Java runtime engines. And and so you get the worst of everything. That meant that people who were making applications now had to include the full version of Java with it. And you gotta you gotta think about this because Java was um, created so that it could be it could be really big, uh, the, the runtime could be super big, and that the you know the bytecode could be really tiny. Well when that didn't work out and the designers of the language, you know, really took liberties with the the, the runtime engine, the JRE even the small one, was like monstrously big. Uh, because it was designed to just be installed once. Yes, like on Linux, if you install Java 11 on your Minecraft, we've got to suck, you got to find your JRE 8, right? So, exactly. And this is this is the, this is is the why it was a dark time, uh, Brian Cantrell calls it. Um, because Java, the, it, every, it, they've put so much money into the marketing that everybody took, off, took like, bought into this horrible disaster of a language. And they still are, and we're all stuck on it. The whole world is stuck on it. But, if you, if you, um, so how does this relate to Eclipse and how does this relate to Electron? So let's, let's track forward. Okay. So you have, you have Java, which failed miserably on its promise to, you know, be able to pass around these tiny little pre-compiled bytecode jars. And that meant that you now had to bundle this massive thing, bloated thing, the, the engine itself, the JRE or the J, JVM, either one. And you had to bundle it with your application to make sure that you got the right one. And that, you know, like enormously bloated, even the simplest of apps. And so, I'm, but it gets worse. Okay, so now we have your app that it is coming with its own. So if you want to be able to install this anywhere, you have to make, um, you have to bundle. So that's another thing that we're trying to do is get around the, the need to create um, software that was specific for a particular uh, CPU, right? They wanted to have all the different versions. Well, because the idea of having the, the JRE on the system sort of failed, and so people started bundling, they wanted truly portable applications. So now you have the, the really the worst of everything, because now they have to bundle. Not only that, they have to take their little bytecode app, combine it with the JRE or the, J, the JVM that goes with a particular architecture, and they have to make enough of them so that they run on every different architecture. The same thing that we get with Go or something now. And by the way, this is this is what makes Go so ridiculously brilliant, because I can compile code on my Mac that won't even run on the Mac. It, it's called cross compilation. And that code will run on anything. I can target it for ARM, I can target it for whatever, but each one is specific. The difference is, is that I can make specific code for all my target operating systems on the same computer, rather than having a, one version of all those computers. It's absolutely brilliant, and it addresses head-on the issue of this failed Java idea. So let's keep going with the failed Java idea. So, so Java has, um, you know, it totally... 
it totally failed to do its thing. So now you have people bundling their bytecode with their little JRE and they're distributing it like that so that they don't, so that, you know, like if you, if you run an installer, an MSI installer or something, um, you're getting everything you need and you don't have to have Java. There were still people who said, Hey, you have to go install this version of Java first, but then people were really getting bitten by that because if you have, if your Minecraft needs Java 11 and you got to find JRE 8 and then you have other Java applications that are running on JRE 9 or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And those those particular versions of Java don't live well with each other. And then you start to get the idea of a, of a JVM, which is where was was what was going wrong, really wrong with Python right now. I mean, Python is right in that dead. It's like Python people didn't didn't even know about this tragedy. Um, the best way, and so is so is Node, by the way. If you if you're doing any Python coding or any node and node coding today, you're using and I just saw this just tonight on a, on another stream. You're using the Python virtual machine or virtual environment, which bundles up a version of Python, all of the libraries that go with that version, and then your application. So when the, when all of those things get bundled together, you get bloat, right? But but at least it's not as bad as the Java stuff started out to be, and now the Node version is the same thing. There are so many different Node versions and everything that you, if you're not starting out with NVM Node Version Manager and building your own environment, then you're not pulling it in. Uh, Zero theory. I don't know Python, but I'll tell you there's always Python two updates, and I'm thinking it's Python three thing now. Yep, and largely containers have saved us from a lot of this, but but containers are not going to be things that we can, at least not yet, that we can distribute to end users. And so this is where we're coming kind of back to Electron and Eclipse. So if you want to distribute your, your, if you want to get your code to your user and you want to keep it simple, you don't want to make them do extra dependency installations. Uh, first of all, these days you're not going to go with a language like Python or Node or, or um, you know, especially not Java, uh, and this is what this is the appeal of of Rust and and Go and the modern compiled languages because the big lesson over the last decade that we've learned over this Java mess that started with that that apparently some people in the Python and Node world have not yet learned is that interpreted languages that require a different interpreter dependency are not suitable for distribution. And I got bit by this big at IBM because we had Perl stuff and I wanted to be able to run it on 10,000 machines. And I couldn't unless I bundled Perl with it. You cannot run an interpreter language without an interpreter. And there's only two ways to do that. You ship the interpreter with the project or you have them install it. And if you want true, you know, deployment flexibility, you have to bundle it with it. So this gets us back to the Java thing. Okay, so so Java has to combine all of the stuff together all right and then th their applications are getting sent out that way but then it gets worse and this this is where we're back to the eclipse thing okay so and um so back to the eclipse story so somebody realized because Eclipse, they're like, oh, Eclipse is cool because it has a, J a JRE in it, sort of. Actually, I think they they didn't have that at first. I think they have that now. I don't. So, so I don't know at what point Eclipse started including Java in it. Uh, but I, I, for a long time, you had to install Java and you had to install Eclipse. And so, um, the thing with Eclipse was that you know you could shave off uh, the front end. Uh, the the editor because it was so modular and so people started making other applications with Eclipse because it was their development environment and they, and they were actually testing their app in it and then some smart person said you know what what if we actually just distributed our application this way what if we distributed it as yet another Eclipse instance with a full version of Eclipse inside of it a full JRE inside of it to go with it and you know a tiny little bit of code that talks to a chat server and so we had the world's largest binaries ever, ever, and the distributions. And at the same time is exactly that. Same time was a chat client from IBM who did that. Did that. It. I, I don't remember the exact sizes, but it would make Chrome look tiny in comparison, because it was this. It was the, you know the biggest Java JRE. It was all this extra framework that was designed to do any all things to all people. So it was also abstracted and bloated out out to craziness levels and then 
then you have this code on top of that for the application. And so, but the thing it bought people is it bought them a thing they could sell that they could just give to somebody and they could put on a computer and it would just run. And so then you saw this, this for a very short time. I mean, it was, I think it was probably only about a year. Uh, IBM in particular did a lot of this. You saw them make all of their applications as Eclipse applications everything so they released lotus notes which is you know one of the flagship first uh they purchased the company way back when in the 80s 70s something like that and you know there and that lotus notes was and it had an email in it of course as well so it was an eclipse application and then they had same time it was an eclipse application and then they would have these other applications so working at ibm you had all of these massive massive bloat is basically and then you also had to use eclipse for your development so a lot of times you'd be you know, on your, on your way doing stuff and you would just, your computer would just die because it had so many things on it. So, so this is, this, why am I telling you this story? Because it was, for some reason, no one has learned from this cautionary tale. So they have gone forward and continued to do this idea of bundling the interpreter and the entire runtime and everything into uh, this thing, this this package that, that gets distributed. Because um, you have to, if you want to be able to just send it to somebody and let them run it. And and Eclipse started that out. And now, so, but then what we see with Electron, coming back full circle to that. So this is exactly what we see in Electron today. We see the same idea, the same the same combination. We see the same combination of technologies, um, and the bundling of them all together to to make a thing that works that that we're comfortable with. So this is a perfect case of developers. Um, hey, hi, exploitation. Oh, oh hi, good morning. <laughs> so so this is exactly this is a good example of developer velocity which is a really crazy term that just means how fast can you make things and get them out um driving the architecture as opposed to the best architecture driving the development so we have a lot of people who know how to do web development so it made sense for for um uh, github actually who made this github who made atom so that's actually what this is built on you can't have a conversation about electron without atom <laughs> 